Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to day three of the Speed Chess Championship 2020. We had another pair, this time Alireza Firuzia, a young prodigy from Iran. 2770 this is his blitz ranking feeder ranking uh, and uh, in this game he's gonna play as black but before um, I show you this game I will just give you a little bit introduction what just happened at the beginning of this um, match and his opponent Vladimir Fedusiev uh, his blitz ranking 2756 so slightly uh, lower ranking than Ali Reza he's 25 years old and if you don't know Vladimir uh, he's I think by ranking uh, number five player in the in the Russian Federation so a very very strong uh, grandmaster in this game he's gonna play as white and what just happened in the first one and a half hour the players played the blitz five minutes and one second incrementation blitzes I think first two games uh, Vladimir won and then he kept that distance of two one games uh, through all the um, all the match so then we had the one hour of three minutes plus one second incrementation uh, which also uh, Vladimir kept the distance and then we had the most crazy 30 minutes bullets uh, bullets one minute and one second incrementation and now imagine the situation this game which I'm gonna show you now was the game where we had the four minutes on the clock so both of the players didn't know um, they gonna play one or maybe two games unlikely more than than two games okay Vladimir still is ahead two points. So Alireza is in a very, very difficult situation. He has to win two games. If it's a draw, uh, it's just over. Okay, Vladimir for sure can uh, can keep, you know, um, two minutes and uh, that would be that would be just over. Uh, so this is where all the thrillers started to happen and, and I will show you one more game of this match. So without further ado, let's see what happened here. So we have e4 by Vladimir Fedosyev, c5, Sicilian defense, nothing fancy here. Knight f3, d6, d4, c takes on d4, knight takes on d4, knight f6, knight c3 defending the central pawn. And now um, a6, uh, knight or variation would be the, the main line. However, we have knight c6, which of course is the uh, also slightly less popular line but it's still very very popular we have bishop g5 by Fedosyev so Richter Reuter variation and um, and now here we have e6 we have queen d2 uh, we have a6 preparing b5 we have castle a uh, pretty much very standard stuff the the main line we have bishop d7 f4 b5 as planned um, and here the main line which Alireza Firuzia really knows because he played a couple of games if you check the database he has uh, quite some games um, in this variation where bishop f6 is played uh, and after g takes on f6 then king b1 queen b6 um, and then after knight c6 bishop c6 uh, then f5 trying to destroy the structure of the pawns however uh black of course gonna gonna push that pawn it's in their uh, really great interest first b4 knight e2 e5 and knight g3 and this line is really well known um to firuzia he played that as black and in the in the past with uh, quite some successes uh, However, here Fedosyev went for knight c6. So this is the different line, bishop c6 uh, and now queen e1. And this variation, uh, for example, is the very old variation. We even in the database fi can find the, 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 the games where um, Lev Pougayevsky played that as black. For example, uh, we have Fedosyev who won three years ago against Alexeyenko. So all of these structures are very, very well known. But this is the one minute game. So the players don't want to go, you know, for uh, some uncharted t territory. So definitely, you know, we could expect them the lines they really uh, greatly know we have h6 we have bishop h4 bishop e7 and now bishop d3 uh, and here we have still one game in the database that position where b4 was played and after 
after knight e2 as you see pretty standard stuff here queen b6 defending this pawn but also keep in mind but there, there is still the attack on the e4 and um, the game ended in a draw uh, it's quite complicated still the position like all the sicilian uh, usually is a is a very interesting and complicated stuff however alireza firuja went for queen c7 so slightly different uh, queen c7 sometimes in sicilian uh, is playable however you always have to have to watch out on some tactics here with queen c7 um, you never know what's gonna happen for now uh, of course for example the the pawn on, on b5 uh, is traded there is no uh, no knight so this knight cannot be traded here uh, or here the bishop is defending but there are always some ideas like knight d5 uh, sacrificing in the in the center uh, if the king is in the center so so why not uh, Fiducia first play a3 so safety first and now of course b4 is not possible rook b8 preparing for b4 and now Fiduciev plays something what a lot of commentators said like what what is this move because now what he should play is something like bishop f6 bishop f6 and then sacrifice this knight on d5 uh, i mean no this is of course not really sacrifice uh, but this bishop can be uh, really easily uh, exchanged now um, in this position the the queen is under attack and the bishop is under attack and the point is if this pawn uh, takes them the knight then of course we have the the check here so king f8 d takes on c6 and this of course still playable for both of the sides uh, but this king definitely is not the greatest king um, and this rook still, you know, a couple of moves is needed to, to bring it to the game. So white would have a, a quite an edge here. Uh, but Fedosyev uh, deviates and he played knight a2. Knight a2 of course is against the any b4 moves however this knight is not really the happy happy knight. So we have a5 preparing still preparing b4 rook f1 um, and now uh, Firuzia doesn't want to have the king in the in the center it starts to be very tricky here uh, so we have the castle and now e5 attacking them the knight also the pawn so exchanging that pawn and now knight d5 uh, and here we have queen e4 and look at this position so the queen is definitely uh, on this diagonal um looks like pretty risky stuff uh, but also it's still defending h4 so keep an eye on the h4 but the most important we have the checkmate tra threat it in one so what black could try to do here is actually knight f6 defending the the h7 and then the bishop would attack the queen so queen would have to retreat uh, however a uh, firuja went for g6 weakening the pawn structure in front of the king which looks pretty much risky but how to exploit that fiduciev didn't have that problem so first he wanted to eliminate the defender of g6 so obviously he went for rook f7 we have rook f7 queen g6 king f8 queen h6 uh, still keeping an eye on the bishop king e8 uh, and now bishop h6 pinning that rook so if the if the king starts to run now then of course the rook gonna be uh, taken for free so we have bishop h4 queen h4 and um, and now the queen defends the the rook and here is the critical moment of the game it's not like white is winning definitely has a lot of initiative here and the position of the black is very difficult uh, however simply queen e5 this pawn is hanging queen e5 solve all the black's problems now rook f1 is obvious move and um, but now rook b7 and how to continue the attack you are in troubles um you want to bring them the knight for example to the game some somehow but the but the knight defense c3 so probably king b1 and maybe do it this way uh but queen g7 and what you're gonna do next this is very very slow i think black gonna solve most of the problems uh move the move the king then White have to decide to to um, get this exchange but it's still you know um, two pieces for the rook and uh, black are in very very comfortable position uh, however Firuja wanted to play b4 and open the b file and get the counter attack with the queen b6 maybe this way 
or even pushing the king you know to the to the center and uh, expose the king so that could be the idea however um, there is the problem rook f1 is winning and uh, Firuja is in a lot of trouble so queen b6 but as you see this attack is so slow and here Fedosyev had the one move which just, you know, finished the game and he could just win the match. Because there is no way that Alireza Firuja during the two or three minutes wins three games. Uh, so you can pause the video and find the strongest continuation for White. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So, of course, there are a couple of moves, but the strongest move, which is just undefendable, is uh, Rook F7. Very subtle move. And, and the idea is that there is the checkmate in next move. So, very, very simple idea. Now, uh, of course, the, the knight cannot come there because that would be the checkmate. The only move which prolongs a little bit the game would be like something like Queen E3. But once King B1, uh, then what else you can do? You can only sacrifice the Queen on E1. Otherwise, you're gonna get checkmated. And, uh, and that's gonna be uh, game over. If Queen G1, a Avoiding that, then actually we have even a uh, worse situation, Rook F1 with this cover check and attack on the on the queen so king d7 and of course this is winning for white so congratulations if you found a rook f7 this is the strongest move in the position however fiduciev was afraid maybe with this queen g1 and um, remember this is the one minute game you don't have much time to to actually uh, calculate the things but this should be intuitive that you take you always can come back with the check Okay, so that was um, that was the, the idea in this position. However, we have bishop f7, which is of course still winning, uh, but now white have to work for the win. We have king d7, and now there is the, the way to win for Fedosyev, but it's very, very complicated one. A takes on b4, a takes on b4, just to not um, open the b file. And now bishop g6 and bring the rook, bring the queen to the game. This is the idea. Now the point is that this pawn really makes a lot of great job with controlling d6. Also this bishop is blocking the way for the king. So uh, the position is extremely difficult. Of course black have some counterplay like b3. Uh, but then uh, rook f7, king c8, queen h8. Queen can retreat actually to d8. Uh, and now after rook f8, black would have a chance to uh, can play something like king c7 uh, get some tempo here uh, but also uh, it doesn't really matter uh, b, b takes on a2 uh, with the idea of promoting this is the great idea of course uh, but then rook d8 with check king c7 and now the point is that after rook b8 white has the checkmate in one move uh, so black can actually uh, promote to the queen but what to play now what to play now uh, if you go for something like uh, queen a5 uh, then simply c3 and uh, and it's all over you, you you cannot defend this is the checkmate uh, and if you try to make something some space for the king maybe this way that the king can escape a bit uh, yes that's true however after queen d8 king c6 there is another checkmate after queen f8 look at this there is another checkmate and not much can be done here. Uh, black can deliver one check, but after b4 all is over. Okay, all is over uh, because this pawn is defended by the queen and the rook. So uh, black has to sacrifice the queen. Uh, keep in mind that this is still a checkmate and even if you go to c7 then you have another checkmate on the c5 so this was quite complicated way to win however quite intuitive if you just don't want to sacrifice more but Fedosyev was in the mood of actually sacrificing more and he played bishop e6 with check king e6 and and now queen h6 of course, with the idea, if the king starts to run, the queen always can come to d6. The rook can join the game here or even here, and um, and that's game over. So that was the idea. However, Alireza Firuja went for the central pawn, king e5, and Danny Ranch actually, who commented the, this um, this game, said that that's if Alireza wins this game, this actually is going to be ten thousand dollars king walk. 
10,000 dollars king walk because if Ali Reza managed to win this game and win another game, this is incredible. How to do that during the four and um, four minutes? This this is just incredible. So um, rook e1. Still, Ali Reza is in a huge huge troubles. We have king d4. Uh, so king walks continue. Queen d2 and and now king c5. We have queen f2. King b5, Queen e2, Fedusev actually needs only a draw here. It's only a draw because we cannot even imagine that Alireza would win two another games in the in the two minutes time. So King a4, um, and now we have Queen c4 pinning uh, that pawn. So we have Rook c8, uh, and here. Fedosev actually had another chance to uh, to get the edge and play a takes on b4. The point is that the pawn um, actually, uh, if that pawn takes, uh, then White would have to find a very difficult move to find, and it's knight c3. This is the only winning move. Okay very difficult of course the pawn cannot take because it's the pin uh, and if king escape to to a5 then of course we're gonna have a checkmate here so that's not possible queen is still blocking the the king cannot escape uh, but after a knight c3 uh b takes on c3 then uh yeah, black have to black are up the material extra bishop, but have to also find the way to win because uh, the queen gonna come to to a2, the rook gonna come to to e5 with checks. There are some mating lines here, uh, bishop b7 maybe with the attack on the on the queen, but it's still not enough. A uh, queen a2, then rook a5. And even if rook joining the, the defense, there is still some moves like c4, king c6, rook e6, winning the queen um, and the game. And this is just one of the lines, uh, quite attractive for black, but it's still, of course, not enough uh, because these two pawns should decide um, that the winner, white definitely has much uh, easier game. And it's not possible to even imagine how to set up any kind of uh, fortress in this position. So that was another crazy way um, to win, uh, which of course in one time a minute control is impossible to, to find. Both of the players have seconds um, on the clock. We have queen b3, king b5. We have queen d3 trying to uh, make a trifold repetition. That would be trifold repetition, uh, of course, in favor of Fedosev. But Alireza found another way of escaping with the king escaping this way so we have rook e6 already blocking them the escape square um, and now we have queen b5 making another escaping square this time this way so we have queen f3 uh, Fedosev of course doesn't want to exchange the queens he would lose the game uh, so we have queen c4 making yet another square now for the king to escape uh, and now b3 attacking the queen we have queen d4 uh, with the very serious threat queen a1 winning the knight actually winning the knight so uh, in this position we have a takes on b4 with check a takes on b4 and believe me or not in this position Fedosev went to b1 to control a1 but there is one huge problem with that move and i hope you see that already that the queen uh, stays on the same diagonal with the bishop and that cannot end well so in the game we have knight c3 with check knight c3 uh, and after bishop f3 uh, vladimir Fedosev resigned and then we had another game another crazy game and believe me or not alireza firuzia won that as well so what that means that means that after three hours of crazy chess it was the score was equal and and the players played another four games in the bullet format one minute and one second incrementation and this four games decided who gonna advance and to another round so i will show you tomorrow one more game and um, decisive game and um, and yeah that's all for today and if you like this video press like if you don't like for some reason press unlike and if you don't want to miss another games from that tournament and other tournaments press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one